So have you ever wondered the difference between kind of like really common symptoms of Asperger's syndrome and then maybe some really odd ones as well? So in this video, I'm covering five of the most odd symptoms versus five of the most common ones. So you can see a parallel to see, hey, maybe if somebody you know is displaying all of these, it could be on the autism spectrum. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Okay, so just to be clear here, Asperger's syndrome refers to a, um, a low support needs type of autism, sometimes referred to as high functioning autism or Asperger's syndrome, but it basically just means it's an autism spectrum disorder. There is no difference between the term autism and Asperger's syndrome, it just means the level of support that the person needs. Okay, now we have that disclaimer out of the way, let's get on with the video. Okay, so I was thinking about this the other day, I was thinking um, about some of the most interesting things that I do that are really odd, and FYI, guys, by the way, my name is Dan, and if you're new here, I have Asperger's syndrome diagnosis and ADHD, and I make weekly videos all about this, so if you're new around here and you want to learn more about those topics, remember to hit the subscribe button. Okay, so, Asperger's Syndrome. Um, I, I find it really interesting that there's some things that I do that are quite, like, odd, right? Like, behavior that's odd, and odd behavior usually doesn't translate to everybody on the autism spectrum, does it? But sometimes there are some common things that we all do, so I'm going to go through them right now. So first, I'm going to go through some common uh, Asperger's symptoms that, like, typically you're going to see between people on the autism spectrum and then I'm going to go through the, the ones that are really odd so stay to the end to see all those. Okay the first one I'm going to talk about here is eye contact or lack thereof. So people on the autism spectrum uh, will have a difficulty creating and maintaining eye contact. This means that they won't be able to initiate eye contact when talking directly to a person and also maintain the eye contact for a long period of time or even a prolonged period of time. It may not be possible. This is due to a lot of different factors. It can be due to the fact that the uncomfortableness of looking someone in the eye may feel like you're actually draining their soul. It could be an intense motion that looking in someone's eye is so intense that they can't really look. Because you have to think about this. People on the autism spectrum see things at a greater magnitude of intensity. So when you're looking in the eyes of somebody, it may just be looking in the eyes of somebody for you. But for the autistic person, it's very intense. So they may not actually make any eye contact, may avoid eye contact altogether. Okay, so number two common Asperger's symptom is a sensory processing disorder or sensory processing issues. Now, this is basically something that's very common. You, comorbidly, which means co-occurring or diagnosed with autism, is sensory processing disorder or actually just shortened to SPD or just sensory issues. It could be things like having aversions to cold food, having aversions to hot food, having aversions to any type of food, having aversions to food, touching other food on your plate and you might have to segregate things out like the liquid over this side if you're having gravy or beans or something and then having like your potatoes separate to your vegetables. There's a whole thing, right? And it's all down to personal preference. But this is very common of people on the autism spectrum to have sensory issues in this type of area. Now, also along this, they may they may be hypersensitive to like the type of clothing that they're wearing. It could be like you know the tag on the back of the clothing. And this is my own merch. It says hello on the Aspie world. But at the back, then there's no tags on my merch. You know, so I make sure that that is um, super important for when I'm selling things because not everybody enjoys the tags and not everybody can deal with that type of feeling. But sensory processing disorder could be anything. It could be like a hyper hypersensitive to smells or hypersensitive to sounds and lights. So you might see autistic people doing this with light because they're trying to counter phase the fact that the light is so bright, right? So there are many different things that are very interesting there. And um, I'm going to go through a uh, an interesting one uh, to do with light that is very odd, but it's a symptom. And I think that it's very common, but it's odd to talk about. So that's a bonus tip right at the end. Okay. So the next thing I want to talk about is restrictive or repetitive behavior. And what I mean by this is people who have Asperger's or autism, they will be kind of very rigid in their behavior patterns that they'll want to do the same thing over and over and over again, which is okay, I guess, but that gets to a point where it becomes almost obsessive. Like they'll want to eat the same cereal every single day. They'll want to sit in the same position on the sofa every day in the same chair every day. Uh, they want to do the same thing every day. You'll have a repetitiveness in their job or their, their kind of entertainment or whatever they do. And that is because autistic individuals will find comfort and, um, uh, uh, and kind of like a feeling of calm by doing the things that they know what to expect you know when you're when you're doing something different every day you don't know what to expect and that's kind of like an anxiety based um mood so that's not for autistic individuals i just want to interject in this video here to let you know that confidence is one of the main issues that holds autistic individuals back from their full potential this is why i made a course which is the chaos to confidence in 90 days blueprint which means i can take an autistic person from 
complete chaos to being very confident and acing their life. So if you're an autistic adult and you want access to this program, you can check it out. The link is in the description down below, or you can go to the aspieworld.com forward slash C to C right now, the number two and get access to this program. Okay, so number four is really interesting. This one is monotone talking. Now, people on the autism spectrum, specifically people with Asperger's syndrome, will be more prone to this. They'll be um, talking in a monotone type of uh, way of talking, which means that there'll be no inflection on their voice. Now, I am an actor. I've been to acting school, um, and I have a diploma in performing arts. And it took me a while, but if you look at my first videos on this channel versus now, um, my speech is very monotone talking. So um, when, you're, when you're putting on a performance, like making a video, it's quite easy for me to create inflection in my voice, even though you may think I talk too fast and I'm slightly monotone. However, people on the autism spectrum, when you're speaking to them, who have Asperger's syndrome, will come across very monotone when they're speaking serious or in-depth about something that may be very interesting to them. So you may see this, that there may be no inflection in the way that they talk, while the dynamic range of their vocabulary and voice may be quite restricted, which I think is very fascinating. Okay, so the fifth most common symptom of Asperger's syndrome is social interaction issues. And this could be things like not knowing how far or close to stand away from somebody when talking to them, not knowing how to initiate or leave a conversation, um, not knowing what the things that may be appropriate and not appropriate to say in a, in a situation in social environments, you know, and not having any filter in that environment. And that's really interesting. I think those things are so interesting, in fact, that it's one of the most telltale signs, not just a common symptom of. And when we say symptoms, symptom, we mean symptomatic characteristic traits. It's not a symptom like a disease has a symptom. Okay, now on to the five really odd, and these are just the great, really odd symptoms. And these are probably some you've never even seen on the internet anywhere before. Okay, so here we go, here we go. Okay, so number one, having three drinks on the go any one time, or having two drinks on the go. So people who are on the autism spectrum um, will uh, have a tendency to have more than one drink on the go at any one time. Like me, right now, I'm drinking water from this. This is a YouTube Stanley Cup that they engraved my um, my channel on, which is really nice of them. Thank you, YouTube. Um, and I'm also drinking this uh, kind of energy drink. Ooh, very nice. Now, why? I get different sensory feelings from things. The water is flat and it's uh, room temperature and it gives me a, um, a thirst quenching experience, right? And it's kind of like essential to the survival of a human. But then I also want the, the fizziness and the, the tartness of the cold can that came from the fridge. So, and sometimes I'll also have a hot drink. So, I'll, so usually in an evening, I'll have a hot cup of tea, a glass of water, and then some kind of like fruit juice, right? Because that's quite interesting. Now, Look, if you're a person on the autism spectrum watching this, then you have three to two drinks on the go at any one time and give this video a thumbs up. I'm calling you out. And it's not because you're odd or you're weird. It's because you're on the spectrum. We're all in it together. I love it. Okay, so the next one is over talking. Now, people on the autism spectrum, especially people with Asperger's because they are normally verbal autistics, they will over talk. And by over talking is if you get them into a pattern talking about something they're interested in or that they enjoy or that they want to know about, they will just go ham forever like I could talk to you about like 9-11 forever or I could talk to you about virtual reality or social media marketing because uh, so much so that I started a side business where I, I help companies grow social media marketing um, and funnel building because I'm obsessed with that stuff like like guys you don't even like every book I own is a marketing or social media or business book because I'm absolutely obsessed so I could talk to you about that for hours and people on the spectrum when they get going they will they will do this they will sound to you everything they know about the thing that they're interested in but they will over talk in, in certain situations okay um number three is tip toe walking and this means walking on the toes of your feet with your heels in the air lots of autistic individuals do this it's something that is almost like a sensory seeking thing and autistic people will find themselves doing this it's almost like a stim right or a sensory stimulatory behavior which basically means something that they do repetitively that feels a certain way that makes them feel kind of calm right and they'll do this without even realizing it. So tiptoe walking for autistic individuals is so interesting. And my girlfriend, bless her, she um, she tiptoe walks. She's on the spectrum and she's tiptoe walking. And um, and it's so funny. Like I, I see a tiptoe walking and I'm like, it's it's just so funny. Like we're all, you know, she has the same diagnosis as me. So like seeing her display those things that I would display, you know what I mean? But actually seeing it in real life is really interesting. So tiptoe walkers, I know you're there. I, I just called you out. I can see you laughing and smiling behind the screen. You're awesome. If you're a tiptoe walker, you have to comment down below and be like, Dan, I'm a tiptoe walker. What's going on? He called me out. Okay, so uh, number four is looking younger. Now, this applies across 
all people on the autism spectrum, but mainly people with like the low support needs, high functioning Asperger syndrome type of autism, right? And what this is, it's quite an interesting one. So a lot of people don't know my age. I'm actually 38 years old, so I'm, I'm close to 40. But a lot of people think I'm maybe in my late 20s or early 30s, right? But I look a, a lot younger than I actually am. Now, then I started to realize that a lot of autistic people look younger than they actually are, right? And I'm like, what the heck is going on? And there is a phenomenon that happens within autism where autistic individuals will look a lot younger than they actually are which is really interesting. You might find autistic people who just look so young and they're like actually like, you know, 18, 19, 20, but they look like maybe 14. And you're like, what the heck? It's so interesting. It's a weird phenomenon and I can't really put it down to anything that I know scientifically, just that it happens and I don't know. Okay, so number five is oral stimming or chewing. So oral stimming and chewing is kind of like Autistic individuals like to chew on chewing gum, or they like to chew on stuff. Now, this is the most common one. They'll chew on the uh, the neckline of their jerseys, or like, uh, or their hoodie tassels. Yeah, I, I know. Again, look at you. I'm calling you out. I'm not trying to call you out. I'm just kind of basically saying these are those things. I can see you just like picking up the tassels of your hoodie and just like chewing on them and like chewing them a bit, or chewing the collar of your of your shirt, and then you'll have like a big chew mark down here and some of the or the sleeves of your jacket. <laughs> This happens all the time. It's very common. So um, autistic individuals like that tactile feedback from the stim or the self-estimatory behavior that they do. So I actually have uh, another YouTuber uh, has this uh, like really hard chewing gum for jawline um, uh, exercises for men. And so I use this because it's a very hard chewing gum. But I have found an alternative for, for females, obviously because females don't want like a big kind of jawline like men, right? Um, is that you can chew two to three chewing gums at once and it will give you that uh, kind of like resistance feedback as well, which is super, super awesome. Um, so I highly recommend checking uh, checking that out if you're um, you know familiar with that. Right, so if you wanted to know the interesting light symptom that is very odd, but I think is very common, this is it, okay? This is the bonus one for you. And this kind of goes, I think it's common, but it's also very odd. So it's a kind of mixture of both. That's why I put it at the end. If you're looking for online counseling uh, directly from your home uh, to use your tablet or smartphone or computer, then I definitely recommend checking out BetterHelp. Now, BetterHelp actually helped me. Uh, they find you a therapist within 24 hours, bespoke to your specific needs. So say you have ADHD or you have some other health condition that you put down, they will find you within two days, really. They'll find you a therapist for that. Now, you can go to the link in the description down below, or you can go to theaspieworld.com forward slash better help right now to get started. I do get a commission for anybody who signed up but i think this is a valuable service and i've used this myself so i'm just handing that over to you okay let's get on with it light flickers for autistic individuals how many times have you been somewhere where like a light is flickering and you're like what the heck is that nobody else can see the flicker but you can see it right this is so so interesting this is fascinating actually because autistic individuals are the only people who can see this light flicker it's normally like that strip tube lighting right and it flickers at a, like a like a, a rate of frequency but that's why autistic people do this because they counterbalance the phase of the flicker now, this is so interesting. In fact, I did a video on my TikTok. So FYI, if you want to go follow me on TikTok, I do videos there daily. And I did this video on TikTok talking about it and it went viral because people were like, holy smokes. And I videoed what the flicker looks like. And I'll try and um, I'll, I'll try and import like a, a, a link to it here somewhere. I'll do like a card where it links over. I'll put it down in the description. It'll link to that TikTok video. Um, but you have to go and see it. It's absolutely amazing. And if you have anything to add, put it in the comments down below. I love you guys. Peace. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.